Okay. Um, uh, I'm um, the co uh, one of the co-founders of Data uh, in Uruguay. Uh, Data is an Uruguayan nonprofit organization that has the mission of creating tools for collective participation. We are working with open da data and uh, transparency in Uruguay and collaborating with many organizations around the world. Uh, what I want to tell you today is the experience uh, we have setting up a freedom of information site in Uruguay. Uh, I'm the software developer. <laughs> uh, Fabrizio is the um, one who wrote the paper and I'm doing the presentation. Uh, he's the lawyer in the team. So, um, the next one. Okay, uh, just uh, to have like a little context, I know everybody knows what freedom of information laws are. <laughs> Here, um, they are an attempt to implement the right of citizens to request information from the states. Uh, we have many of them around the world in different degrees of implementation. Sometimes we only have the law, sometimes we have a data online, sometimes there are websites to request information. In Uruguay, um, we have a law since 2008, a freedom of information law. Uh, Uruguay is a very small country in this, uh, between uh, Brazil and Argentina with a population of three million people. Uh, we have like a plan to have, like everybody has access to internet because they can have a plan of free internet. There's internet in the schools and the public places. And there's a plan for, there's every kid in the country have a laptop for the public schools. So, um, and in 2008, uh, we have this law that is quite consistent with the international standards. It covers much of the states. The states publish information, is free. Um, for requesting the information, the information can be reused, reused and exceptions are limited. It still has many problematic implementations. Uh, many of the people that have to give the information don't know how to reply to emails. <laughs> um, sometimes they type write the information, scan it, and then they send it. Uh, there's only a few requesters that are experts or journalists, and the law is not known for the average citizen uh, because it's quite difficult to make requests. So seeing that, and um, we, we had that experience with the law, and then we saw the experience that had the people in the UK, we decided what do they know, and we love it. I thought it was a great experience, like, like technical, and also how they involved in, com in the community in creating this space. And they, they open source their software, and with that software, we install um, the site Que Sabes. It's powered by Alabatelli. Um, we installed the site, we talked with the government many, many times. We talked about with the government about the project. We talked with the, with the people with, that we knew in the government that were uh, working with open data and transparent, the ones that were pushing to have open data in the government. Uh, we partnered with the government. Uh, and then we decided uh, for the project to success, it was very important to partner with the organizations in Uruguay, with the communities already doing requests and working with open data. So we partnered with some organizations in Uruguay, and we launched this site last year. Uh, we launched it in a public event in the presidential executive building. And we did a big marketing, uh, like with the, mass, with the traditional media and with the social media. Um, and also we did some trainings with citizens and public servants. So what's unique about Que Sabes? Um, each request, it's made by the person and not by us. Uh, in many other sites, it happens that like the, the organization that implements the site is the one making the request for legal reasons. In Uruguay, there's not a requirement, so each person makes the request. Uh, all the requests are public in the site. If the request is denied, the person can appeal to, to an appeal body uh, for appeal to the request. We, uh, we have a plan of having like, that process to be automatic too. Uh, we do advocacy for the right to ask for information, um, and we change the government policy to allow for freedom of information requests via email. The law doesn't say that has to be written by paper, face to face. It, has, it, has, it says it has to be written, but not the way. So we push for it to be uh, by email. So uh, and the, of the government may then communicate saying uh, the email is a legal way of requesting information. Um, and then the site is a public repository of freedom of information requests to the Uruguayan government. Both the requests and the responses are public. And 
we are building a space for the community of people that are requesting inform information to discuss the request um, and maybe to see how to, to use them. No? The stats are these, like we have in five months 380 users, 185 requests, and 90 public bodies that are not of, of, uh, the public bodies. And in comparison with New Zealand, uh, they have like 466, uh, 416 requests in two years. Uh, we compare it with New Zealand because it's the similar size of country. Uh, and the lessons learned are, if you can do requests by email, push, push, push for the authorities to answer. Um, we follow the requests that were not answered in the time limit or the ones that were denied and went to the government and had conversations with them about how to make it real. <laughs> um, be prepared to talk with authorities, identify key actors in the government, engage with organizations or people already in doing freedom of information requests. We totally believe that for all the process we are, we are working on, we need to involve the communities that are working already in, to solve the problem. A time and effort, outreach to the, uh, to the average city and go out to the traditional and new media. That's all. <laughs>